Hey guys, how's everyone doing? <laughs> it feels so weird to be like sitting on my bed, but I decided to give it a go because sometimes when I sit on my desk, I feel like I can't fully relax. This is just a bit more homely to me. This is a bit more like personal, a bit more chill. I feel like I'm talking to myself, which I am like half the time anyway. I wanted to conversate from my bed today. Um, I oh, wanted to do another sit down video. I've been like really enjoying doing the vlogs and they're very easy to film. They feel like very authentic, like I'm not like performing too much. But I also really enjoy sit down talking videos and helping you guys with your style and your confidence and you know being authentic with yourself and I really enjoy these sitting down videos. Um, and I know some of you guys do too. Today I wanted to talk about understanding style as a form of language. I have some notes on my laptop. I've read like quite a few good articles this week and I've watched a few good videos. I'm actually gonna create a playlist I think on my YouTube with all of my favorite interviews, whether that be like fashion or culture. Um, Cause sometimes if you follow me on Instagram, sometimes I post like articles on my story or like something that I may have seen or like an interview, like I'm, I'm gonna try and do it a bit more now. That's one of my favorite forms of media to consume is like just watching a video or a podcast or an interview um, to learn. I find it so useful and especially when I can like multitask and like listen to it in the car or listen to it in my room, whatever it is. So that's one of the ways that I feel like I've learned a lot of my knowledge when it comes to fashion, about the industry, the creative industry in general and how people um, perceive different parts of the industry like I love interviews I love them and I think you learn so much from people who have like already walked that walk of life but today yes understanding style as a form of language so what I mean by that is I think it can often be overlooked the idea of style you know style is important and especially if you're in the creative industry I think it just tells so much about a person and it can give you so much understanding before you conversate with someone and I feel like that's pretty special. Um, I think there was like a recent video of Rihanna and on the People Gallery. She also communicated the same idea that like style is kind of like this secret hidden message of like I don't need to go around and ask everybody in the room about themselves before I can like see them already and see how they're dressed and like that in itself like tells me about a person and I almost feel like it skips a few steps in a good way because you can kind of see who you might be on common ground with, who you might get along with, who maybe you share some of their interest with, interest with, depending on how they're dressed. Um, so I feel like that's what I mean by style and how it can aid us. But getting there, I think, is most important. Like getting to the point where you can walk out of the house and feel confident in the way you look and be like, yeah, I know I look good. And that doesn't happen every day, so give yourself some grace, please but maybe three, four out of seven days a week if you can do that. That is just the best feeling ever. And knowing that like you can build relationships, like literal relationships off people, like coming up to you and being like, hey, I really like your shirt. Like, where's it from? I really like your shoes, like whatever it is. And you can actually like form friendships off that. I feel like it's such an exciting thing. This actually leads me very well on to my first point. And I'm gonna link like any references or media that I may have like looked at before this video down below if you want to have a look yourself but I read this article on this woman's website and the article was called Star as a Language. The idea is that personal style is not just about fashion it's about having a personal power and influence on the way you enter a room and how people choose to interact with you. She used a really good reference like analysis in that when you go to a cafe or a coffee shop or a restaurant, one of the first things you notice is the interior decor. And this often leads us to like going to a place or not, like sitting in and having dinner at a new place maybe that you haven't heard of before. We massively look at like the decor, same when we're looking for a hotel. Like how clean is it in here? Like, oh my gosh, the walls are pink. I'm not sure if I'm feeling this vibe. Like this feels very childish, whatever it is. Um, like interior decor is so important and it's one of the first things people think about when they have a shop or they have um, a cafe or a restaurant and it's so so significant in who chooses to enter and who chooses to invest in your space by sitting down and purchasing food and enjoying food in the company of your space and she kind of compares in this article that 
to the idea of how we dress and like style is kind of like our interior decor I feel like that's how you have to think about it one thing that she mentions which is very key is the idea is that even before we start with the interior decor and we start decorating she talks about the idea that the designer will choose the vibe that they want to be communicated. What kind of vibe do we want in here? Do we want this to be a place for families? Do we want this to be a place for kids? Do we want this to be a place for romance? And all of these things are so important. And once you understand and you know and you can acknowledge the vibe that you want to communicate, everything else becomes so much easier. And this is the point I want to talk about in this video, is that you have to know yourself before you first, you first have to know yourself before you can understand how you want to dress. Because if you don't know authentically who you are, then how are you supposed to accurately communicate how you dress? That doesn't work, like it doesn't add up. Another interview that I watched recently, which was Brenda Hashtag, I forget who the interviewer was. As a whole, I didn't really enjoy the interview, but there was this one really key point that she made that I really liked. And it's the idea that style is more than just like what you wear. It's how you choose to communicate with people. It's how you choose to talk to people. It's whether you say please and thank you. Like it's so much more, it's your aura. It's your whole energy about you. Maybe I'll insert it here now. Targeted at like 18 year olds on TikTok. Personal style is so many things. I'm gonna be like so emotional, right? But it's like how you treat your friends, how like your table manners, you how you carry yourself, how you're sitting, how you're speaking, how like it's so many things. It's all of your life experiences, whether that's positives or trauma, it's who you looked up to, if you had this fantastic boss or the celebrity whose style you got to copy, or your mom. I think it's so many things to so true at like 18. This whole idea is like closing the gap between how people see you versus how you want to be perceived. And the closer you get to expressing your authentic self, the more accurate people perceive you as your true self and they know who you are. My second point is, which is a very, this next point is very important, discovering your authentic self. And this is like obviously ultimately what it comes down to. This is what this whole video is about. This is what like my past video is about, it's like, understanding who you are really at your core who are you like do you know do you get it like i know that's a process and i can understand this is a whole process like this is life right like this is this is a whole game like figuring out like who we are who people around us are like who we want to be like and how do we know who we are and how do we know like that we're not consuming other people and then like just like attaching ourselves to their personalities rather than like actually understanding what we like. Whenever you watch a video about rebranding yourself or discovering yourself, like a lot of people talk about mood boards and collecting ideas and thoughts and putting them together. <clears throat> and as much as I feel like in some circumstances that can be a good idea, I do think that like collectively online we consume too fast and sometimes things are too easy access. And this follows the whole idea of like overconsumption as well. When we consume, 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 or we, we look at things and we're like, yeah, let's put that on my mood board. Yeah, let's put that on my mood board. Oh yeah, I like that top, where does she buy it from? Let me put it on the mood board and add it to my purchase list. Like when we do this, everything becomes so fast. And I feel like slowing down that process of being inspired will help you to understand yourself in a more thorough way. So, for example, like if you were to like go out and like, I don't know, people watch for a bit and look at people's clothes or go like window shopping and have a look and see what you like. I think the slower process is so much more important than like consuming online and being like, I like this, I like this, I like this. I'm encouraging you to slow down and observe more, consume less and observe more. Take it in. Take everything in, go outside, smell the grass, and take things in before you make decisions and overconsume. The more that we choose to consume star inspiration, the more our style merges with current trends and what's going on online. Because at the end of the day, like most popular media is somewhat trendy. So 
how are we able to like actually interpret our own personal style if everything we see is trendy like it's not all our fault because obviously this is what is being fed to us but that's why it's just as important to slow down and like go outside and observe people like there is a world outside our screens guys like honestly I forget sometimes as well like no shade I forget but go outside and actually observe people and observe the way people dress and how they carry themselves and it's so much more fun honestly like Pinterest in real life I promise you it is just as fun <laughs> Go get a bubble tea, a matcha, coffee, whatever floats your boat, whatever doesn't unsettle your stomach, whatever your drink of preference is, go get one and just chill and just observe people for a bit. Like, that's your homework, okay? I'm giving you that as homework. On this same topic of, like, aura and energy and also, like, that's one thing that can't be communicated online is that, like, how someone carries themselves because it's through a screen is very, very different. And you guys must have had that as well. Like, sometimes you see someone online and then you meet them in person and you think, wow, like, that wasn't what I was expecting. Like, not that I had, like, a specific idea in mind. I just feel like my preconception of you was incorrect. Like, I thought you were going to carry yourself differently. I thought you would have dressed differently. I thought you would have, like, spoken slightly differently. And this is because, like, in real life, we all carry these energies. Like, it's the same way you can be attracted to someone before maybe they even start talking to you. It's because it's an aura when the way someone walks, the way someone, like, lights up a room, the way someone, like, you know, I don't know, eye contact, whatever it is, there are so many things to do with all of our senses and the way we move. And the way we dress that deter or attract certain people. Um, I feel like a really good example of someone who is authentically themselves, who's very well known, um, is Carrie Bradshaw in the Sex and the City series. Even when you go and watch old interviews with Sarah Jessica Parker, you can just see the energy, like light up, her energy light up in the screen. She is so feminine but childish and carefree in all positive respects like so totally herself and that character suited her so well suits her so well because it really does feel like i think somewhat a reflection of some parts of herself and um, there was a specific interview i'll link it down below the always delightful sarah jessica parker <laughs> Stool? Oh, that's right. Yes, I'd be honored. Okay. <laughs> there it is. Wow, but you this weren't is using really it. You amazing. curled up so nicely in the chair. <laughs> you don't even need it. Well, I feel like I'm at home. <laughs> yeah. You look nice and summery. Yeah. Thank you. Nice to see. I have to. And you can just tell the way she carries herself. She is so herself. Like she walks into the interview. She gets comfortable in her chair. She's like she's sitting on her a leg like on like we're talking like live like saturday night tv show vibe but she's got like her legs crossed in the chair and she's just so fun and playful and that is when we are at our best we are at our best when we can just like fully be ourselves and people are so attracted to that because you don't realize like when you have such a positive energy and you can be yourself how attracted people are to that and sometimes that can be good and sometimes that can be bad but people really enjoy being around that and i think that's the way she's able to like in that series and in real life as well she can dress so well is because everything that she does is very authentic to her it's not so much about like what she's wearing but she throws things on but she makes everything so playful and fun and she uses it as a form of self-expression so i feel like that's a great series if you're like trying to understand how fashion can impact your life in a positive way and um, change the way you interact with people. I think that's a really great series to watch. Next point. What you don't like is just as important as what you do like. So I watched this Lawridge interview this week. Um, I think this is the one with New York Magazine. I rewatched it rather. And one of the things he talks about, Lawridge is a very well-known stylist. He kind of like rebranded Zendaya came up with Zendaya from Disney Channel and at the time when Zendaya was on like Shake It Up on Disney Channel 
I think a lot of the characters and stars from Disney Channel weren't considered kind of like real actors, real actresses because they were very much sectioned off and like put into that box of like, okay, you're a Disney star channel. And Laura Roach, who's now like a very well-known stylist, one of the best there is, um, he came up with her and completely rebranded her looks and now she's someone who's taken very seriously. She's a model, she's an actress, but she's also sitting front row at fashion shows and her outfits reflect her maturity and how much she's matured. Now she's able to get work with companies who never would have considered working with her when she was on Disney Channel because of the evolution of her style. And you can see that with a lot of other actors and actress actresses who were on Disney Channel and haven't matured in the same way. So you can see how Laura Roach has like come in, helped her in learning to dress for certain appearances, for certain shows in order to attract a certain clientele, a certain audience, and now enables her to work with a brand such as like Louis Vuitton, On Running, whatever it is, like, you know, she's worked with so many different brands, but it quite literally has given her new opportunities to be seen in that light. So going back to the interview, what I was saying is one of the key things he says is when he works with new clients is that he says to the interviewer, what I make them do is I make them come to my studio. I'm assuming he's talking about like a studio, an office space where he keeps like all his clothes. He says, I make them come to my studio and I make them pick out everything that they love and everything that they hate, anything that they would never wear. And he says, this helps him determine like what you like, what you don't like, what you would never consider wearing, what, what feels like total discomfort for you. And I feel like this is so important to understand what you don't like just as much as what you do like. Because we sometimes forget about that. It's the same when you're looking for a partner, you're looking for a friendship. I want someone who is active. I want someone who is financially stable. I want someone who is ready for marriage. I want someone who wants to have children. I want someone who would like to live in the city or in the countryside. Like It's so important to know what we don't want. I don't want someone who is disloyal. I don't want someone who is dishonest. I don't want someone who is a vegetarian, whatever it is. Like you need to understand what you can't work with so you can determine even more so what you like and what you're attracted towards. And this is gonna help you with shopping habits as well. This is gonna help you to understand, okay, you know what, we've tried to do like the pencil dress a few times and every time I've bought one, I haven't ended up wearing one. So, you know, I've decided I don't like that. Um, orange, personally for me, it doesn't work for me. So let's leave that there. Like understand what you don't like. Okay, determine. Like we, this is another homework activity. Get get a pen, paper and pen, and determine what you do like and what you don't like. And this is going to give you some clarification in your mind to, so you can have more confidence when you're shopping. My next point is more so a topic of discussion, but I feel like I can understand now why it doesn't work. Is the idea this idea of like wardrobe essentials? And I think what I've like come to realize is that like, it kind of like, it doesn't exist. And I feel like we all need to like move back from this way of like wardrobe essentials because everyone's wardrobe essential is gonna be so different. So I think stop learning to shop for like what other people would consider wardrobe essentials or like building a basic wardrobe and start to look for pieces that just genuinely bring you joy. Look for pieces that are, are statement pieces that are fun and then pieces that can complement and work with that and work with multiple pieces in your wardrobe. Because the idea of a wardrobe essential is almost like the idea of like a universal breakfast. Like, everybody has to eat cornflakes for breakfast like th that doesn't work it's never gonna work like it doesn't really make sense so yeah I feel like like we all have different body types we all have different skin colors how on earth is it is are we gonna have like a universal like order of essentials like it doesn't really make sense I feel like that's something to stay away from <clears throat> and go back to more so like what what are you naturally drawn to and what brings you joy so to sum up this whole video, I feel like ultimately, once you can understand who you are better, everything, this whole process is become, gonna become a lot easier. Give yourself grace, um, but also understand the importance and give it time of like how you investing in this is you investing in yourself and 
investing into like the rooms that you're going to walk into, the opportunities that you're going to have, even the way people treat you on the day to day. Like I feel like for me personally, like on days where I look better and I feel better, I have far better interactions with strangers, whether that be like in a supermarket or, you know, going to buy some flowers or whatever it is. Like I think overall, when you have that, that high energy and that high aura, people treat you a lot better because outwardly you are reflecting something like a joyous and happy soul and people can tell that and they feed off that and they also want to join you and be happy with you so they will smile at you or like you know maybe like whatever it is like help you whatever I think people can sense that and we shouldn't underestimate how much people can sense that once you know what you like, it's easy to find what you're looking for because you know where you're going, okay? You can't book a hotel and airplane and activities if you don't even know what country you're going to. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't make sense, okay? We have to know where we're going. And the destination can change. You don't have to go to France every summer. Do you know what I mean? The destination is allowed to change. But once you know where you're heading and the direction you're going in, everything becomes more streamlined and far, far more easy, I promise. So in sum, in order to, to understand what your taste is, you have to understand who you are, okay? And I know you got this. As I said, I would love to like conversate about this as well. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you enjoy this video. Let me know if you like the talking videos more. I really enjoy these. And I hope we all see you next time. But have an amazing week, guys. Have an amazing weekend. And I will see you soon.